Hi, this is Joe again with another video. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be discussing, since this is Thanksgiving week, as I'm doing 20, Thanksgiving week 2016, as I'm doing this video, uh, I'm going to be discussing one of the most infamous parades and one of the most infamous moments in, t in terms of, with the, of the parade. Uh, There's, of course, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. This is the 90th anniversary year. I'm sure probably, after I watch the parade, probably do, do a review of the 90th anniversary parade. I'll probably, probably do that later on this week. After I watch the parade, of course. <coughs> but for this, <coughs> excuse me. For this video, I'm going to be doing, discussing the 1989 Thanksgiving Day Parade. Now, why do I to discuss a parade that's 27 years old? Well, because it was an infamous moment that happened even before the, the NBC broadcast of the parade, which we're going to get to. Uh, the 1989 parade was, of course, and you could see uh, most of it, or a good chunk of it, on YouTube. So you could see the, see the parade, and that was the first time in about like, over 50 years that it snowed in New York City on Thanksgiving Day. So it's kind of fun and neat to see you know, the snow on the floats. Um, there's also one particular float where they had like a super, like a Marvel superhero float. With some people dressed up as uh, some of the Marvel superhero characters. And, you know, overhead was the Spider-Man balloon. But in that particular, f uh, they had Melba Moore singing, I'm looking out for a hero. Um, that had more stunts involved, but because of the snow, in the dangerous, in the slippery and slushy conditions, they cut out a lot of the stunt, the big stunt work for that for that uh, particular act, for that when that float came down Broadway. And of course, it was also the time when they had the the old route or the original route of the parade, which went from 77th Street and Central Park West, through Columbus Circle, down Broadway, through Times Square, and then eventually down Broadway around. Where Macy's is and turns that corner on 34th Street, goes up 34th Street. Now where the parade is, you see just the 34th Street side of Macy's and not the floats coming down from uh, Broadway. So you can see what, what's coming in terms of floats or balloons or whatever. You have a bad angle on television wise. What's coming now? Now, for the 1989 parade, the infamous moment I'm talking about was... God, you know, God bless him. And it was a Dick Oliver who was a local reporter uh, on a local Fox network at that time. Uh, there's a WNYW Channel 5 here in New York who I found out recently passed away about a week and a half ago. So, in a way, I'm dedicating this video to Dick Oliver because he was involved at this moment. Uh, and you said Dick Oliver was a reporter for Good Day New York. It was the one of the first, not the first, of these good day New York, of these good day uh, local news channel, local news programs, and the, and this this show has been here for like well, approximately a year and a half, and that time it's doing like a like a June or July nineteen eighty eight, and so by November nineteen eighty nine, by thanks, or I say by Thanksgiving nineteen eighty nine, Good Day New York was challenging the Today Show, in the meetings for the morning news show. And, and by the end of Good Day in New York was about it went at that time in those days it went for two hours from seven in the morning to nine in the morning, Monday through Friday, and so at the same time the Today Show was also on for two hours in those days as well, from seven to nine in the morning you know Eastern time. So like I said, Good Good Day in New York was challenging the Today Show for the ratings because the Today Show was the highest rated morning show at that time from 7 to 9 in the morning so that's there was a huge rivalry going on between Good Day New York and the Today Show well Good Day New York was just a local show local news program for two hours so that's because it was local more people especially in New York City were, were of course were watching that more than Good Day than the Today Show because the local news factor so on Thanksgiving Day 1989 which was November 23rd, 1989, uh, Dick Oliver was, you know, he was set to be at the starting point of the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and he saw Deborah Norville. Of course, Deborah Norville now is the 
host of the news magazine show Inside Edition. By that time, she was a co-host for the Today Show. And she was running there. I think she replaced Jane Pauling, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, Dick Oliver happened to see Jane Paul, uh, not Jane Pauling, Deborah Norval at the storyline. Say, hey, here's the co-host of the parade, Deborah Norval. And it says, and of course, we're getting her on camera. And she didn't realize that was uh, live TV, uh, that she was on live television. Uh, so, so she says to him, "Where, where are you from? Where, where, which channel are you from?" I said, "Because I guess she thought that he, would, that Dick Oliver was from the local NBC station, New York City, Channel Four, New York City." Uh, but no, she said, "Oh, I'm from Good Day, New York." I said, "Oh, you're Good Day, New York?" She goes, and, the, and Dick Oliver says, "Yes, I am." And Deborah Novo says, "Good Day, New York," and it was just before they brought with him. Five to ten minutes before the NBC broadcast of the Macy's Thanksgiving, of the 1989 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. That caused a huge uproar. And Deborah Norval was, was this close, literally this close, from being fired because she said Good Day New York on the Good Day New York quote, uh, show. I am not kidding. She, she was really ranked over the coals and literally... F uh, but this close was being fired right on the spot for, for, for doing it. Uh, there was, and that was what mostly what people were talking about, was that moment. Um, and so, of course, the next year, 1990 parade, here comes Dick Oliver with a big bouquet of flowers and a, a big box of candy and a, and a bigger bouquet of flowers to give the door as, as a peace offering, saying, sorry, you know, like, I'm sorry I got you in trouble. Uh, I want to apologize for, get, for, for nearly getting you fired. I apologize for that. But meanwhile, Deborah Norval was not. She, I mean, she did cover the parade. A uh, co host of the parade with Willis Scott. But uh, she was not at 77th Street. She was down at 34th Street with Macy's. So for the next few years, uh, because of the hoopla of the year before, in 1989, uh, NBC did not have somebody, some of the, of the female co host at 77th Street covering the starting point of the parade. Uh, just because of what happened, trying to keep, trying to keep the Good Day New York away from the NBC, the, the co-hosts of the NBC, of the, of the NBC's coverage of the Thanksgiving Day Parade. So that was going on for like a couple of years, and then eventually they uh, stopped doing that because I think it was a stink. They said, hey, how come they don't have a report of my, the, the starting point of the parade anymore? So that's one thing I, I, rem I remember from that parade in particular, and that's the snow. Uh, but also, of course, it was in the 1989 parade. They had a couple of groups from a marching band from Hawaii and, and, and a dance group from from Hawaii. And of course, they never saw snow before, so they were thrilled of seeing the snow on Thanksgiving. And the other thing that this is how long ago it was. You only had like ten character balloons in in the parade. Of course, nowadays it's like almost double that. It's like maybe 16, 17 balloons today. But at that time, you only had ten. Uh, throughout most of my my life, at least half my life, you only had ten character balloons from the parade. Most of the parades, uh, most of the stuff you see in the Macy's Day Theory Day Parade were either marching bands, or Broadway shows, or floats, and not so much the character balloons. You only had like most most of the time you had to take ten, but in the 1989 parade you had actually you had eight live because two of the balloons, one of them was Snoopy. Snoopy balloon and the brand new Bugs Bunny cartoon uh, balloon to celebrate because 1989 was the 50th anniversary of Bugs Bunny. Uh, Bugs Bunny debut in 19, 1939. So they had a, a very special 50th anniversary balloon of Bugs Bunny and but that broke. So both the Snoopy balloon and the Snoopy balloon also broke as well. So those two balloons then go down Broadway. They, I guess they must have taken down by halfway down the route or whatever it is. On the, and they never threw, threw them in to begin with. I guess they crashed the problem at Central Park. So they never had them. Uh, but they showed like a videotape of the two balloons. During, uh, they showed the Snoopy balloon from the year before. Uh, for, for, 1988, for the 1988 parade. 
and they show the test flight for the Bugs Bunny because that thing Bugs Bunny was supposed to be the new balloon for that year. Uh, but they didn't have the the Warner Brothers or the Looney Tunes flow, and they had that act with the with the one with the Bugs Bunny cartoon characters, uh, which was it was good, it was entertaining, and you also had the Chippendale uh, Rescue Rangers song sung by the Jets uh, singing group. Uh, and also you have Fred, comedian Fred Trevelina, you know, God bless him, you know, he also passed away uh, doing an imitation of Jack Nicholson as the Joker because that was the year that Batman came out. Uh, but as a parade or something, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad parade, but I always remember the 1989 parade because of that infamous moment that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but you can check out at least a good chunk of the 1989 parade on YouTube. There's like somebody put on like a partial uh, video of, of the 1989 parade, so you can check that out. Uh, and also, the thing that also was annoying that Will Scott was putting himself into the act. There was a, like the third of ten years of I think it was like ten or eleven years in a row that Will Scott hosted the parade. Uh, thankfully, he's not doing it anymore. But they have a guy who starts as annoying, uh, Matt Lauer, doing it. But Will Scott always put himself into the act for for the uh, because the booth was right, you know where the now where Will Scott was set it's right by where the parade goes so he constantly would jump out of the booth and get into the act with the Rockettes or some of the bands some of the dance groups uh, but as the parade itself I think the 1989 is very good and it didn't have constantly commotion like every five minutes uh, they'll go for like to say ten or 10 to 12 minutes without a commercial. Uh, but the 1989 parade is always. Be, I have the whole parade on videotape, on, v, on old VHS. So uh, I always like to bring them, that particular parade out because of the fact that, you know, there's snow. And of course, like I mentioned, the Devin Norville moment. I'm trying to find the Devin Norville moment on YouTube, but I haven't found it. I don't know if anybody has it and put it on there. I have not seen it. I have not found it yet. Uh, but there's one of the most infamous moments in, in the, the Plains history, but in Good Day New York history as well, because he always got, like I said earlier, he almost got Devin Norville fired for that. I mean, whole career was, was, was almost or practically ruined because, because of that moment. So let me review of the 1989 Thanksgiving Day Parade. Please click on the video, please read it. Feel free to comment on it. Please subscribe to my channel. And please uh, forward this video on your Facebook pages. You can also check, follow me on, on Twitter. Uh, I know I haven't announced it yet. Not, not much yet. Follow me on Twitter. And you can check out all my videos on my YouTube channel at rallyc.com. There's all WDY, letterc.com. There's a homepage of the Rally Reviewer. Christine Moore, check out all of his videos on his uh, website. All of his content. Not only does his videos, but all of his content as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.